Step three, reaching for distance, entanglement swapping. So in the previous step, we have seen how to establish a link level entanglement. Here we will extend it how to establish long distance end-to-end -end entanglement. So let's consider that we have uh, three network nodes represented by station zero, station one, which is holding two qubits, and station two. And already uh, we went through the steps of establishing entanglement between uh, the neighbors. So station zero has a qubit which is entangled with a qubit in possession of station one. And also station two has one qubit which is entangled with a different qubit that uh, is in the possession of station one. And the goal is to establish entanglement between station zero and station two. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is that we perform a bell state measurement at station one. And depending on the outcome of the measurement, what happens is we establish end-to-end uh, -end long distance entanglement between station zero and station two, even though they are not directly physically linked. And this procedure is known as entanglement swapping, and we will uh, address it, how to derive it mathematically in this step. And in the next step, we will address the question of how to handle errors and purify noisy results in order to obtain uh, better quality states between station zero and station two. So let's label these qubits as follows. Station zero has qubit A. Station one has qubit A prime, which is entangled with A and qubit b prime which is entangled with qubit b at station two and again end goal is to establish maximally entangled state between station zero and station two meaning between qubits a and b and b so we said that station zero and station one are entangled via the following bell pair and for concreteness let's assume that it's the phi plus state so it's a superposition of zero zero plus one one and in the same way, uh, B prime and B uh, are uh, entangled in a maximally entangled state given by phi plus, which is again 0, 0 plus 1, 1. So the total state of all the four qubits is given as follows. It's a tensor product of the maximally entangled state phi plus between A and A prime and the maximally sta entangled state phi plus between uh, qubits B prime and B. And in the next step, the following identity will be very useful. We can rewrite the state 0, 0 in the Bell state basis. And 0, 0, you can check for yourself, is just the sum of the maximally entangled state phi plus and phi minus. Similarly, we can do it for the other states 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And they're just different combinations and superpositions of the four Bell states. So let's get back to our initial state. We said that our initial state are just two uh, bell, uh, uh, bell states phi plus in a tensor product between A, A prime and B prime B. If we write it out, we, can, uh, we get the following expression in the computational basis. So we have a superposition of four terms. And now we use our identities. We said that the zero, zero can be rewritten as a superposition of phi plus and phi minus. And here we are going to perform a measurement on A prime and B prime. We are going to measure them in the Bell state basis. This is why we want to rewrite those particular qubits and re-express them from computational basis in the Bell state basis. So we take zero, zero and our identity tells us that we can rewrite it as phi plus plus phi minus. Similarly, 0, 1 can be rewritten as the superposition of psi plus and psi minus, and so on and so forth for 1, 0, and the last term, 1, 1. So we get, we obtain the following expression. Now what we can do is we can group uh, the qubits that we are going to measure on the left and the qubits that we are not going to measure on the right. Here, we're not really doing anything. We're just reordering uh, uh, the qubits in our expression. And finally, we group, uh, group the terms according to which Bell state they are in. So we have the following state. Phi plus times this superposition plus psi plus this superposition and so on. So we can now clearly see that if we measure our uh, qubits um, at station one, 
which are A prime and B prime in the Bell state ba ba basis, and we obtain the result corresponding to phi plus. Then we are projecting the qubits A and B, so the qubits which are held in station zero and station two, into a maximally entangled uh, Bell state phi plus zero zero plus one one. Similarly, we have a possibility of obtaining the other three possible Bell states at A prime and B prime. We can get psi plus. Then we know that the state of the qubits A and B is also in psi plus. And similarly for psi minus and phi minus. So, again, let's go back to our uh, visual aid. We started with two uh, maximally entangled pairs of qubits between station 0 and station 1 and between station 2 and station 1. Then we perform a Bell state measurement of, on the qubits held by station 1. And the, this resulted in the entanglement being established between the end-to-end -end nodes station 0 and station 2. But that's not all. Station 1 also needs to let station 0 and station 2 know of the outcomes of the measurements. It doesn't need to send the outcome of the measurements to both of the stations. It is enough to send it just to one. But both of the stations need to be notified that the procedure has been carried out successfully. So this introduces some time delay between uh, um, how far we can progress in terms of establishing entanglement. Because these station 0 and station 2 need to know that now they are entangled. They need to be notified classically that the Bell state measurement and station 2 has taken place and it has been carried out successfully. Maybe you have noticed that, actually, that the procedure that we have been describing in this step is very similar to the procedure described in step 2, where we are establishing link, establishing link layer uh, entanglement. And in fact, mathematically, it's very similar. In link level entanglement, we're dealing uh, of uh, swapping the entanglement between photon and memory by measuring the photons uh, at the Bell state analyzer and establishing a memory to memory entanglement. Whereas in end to end entanglement, we are only entanglement swapping between entanglement established between pairs of memories. And this is physically quite a big difference because uh, using linear optics, uh, we will see in the next lesson the maximum success probability of actually performing entanglement swapping on photons is limited by 50%, whereas uh, entanglement swapping between memories can be done deterministically, provided that we have uh, good experimental techniques and we can limit the effects of noise. An alternative uh, way of um, uh, understanding entanglement swapping is via teleportation. Remember, in teleportation, we are in possession of some uh, arbitrary state. So let's say that our state is uh, this qubit A prime. And then what we do is we share uh, a maximally entangled state between uh, qubits B prime and B. And by measuring uh, these two qubits, A prime and B prime, in the Bell state basis, we are effectively sending the qubit A prime onto uh, the qubit that was originally labeled as B. So we are transferring the state that A prime was in onto B, and then B becomes A prime. But A prime was entangled with A, so basically it takes its entanglement and it carries it all the way to B. This is another very neat way of understanding entanglement swapping. 